Okay, as I mentioned before, I'm going to take all this equipment here and mount it inside a metal can. Now, the metal can that I found that I'm going to be using is an ammo can. Nice big ammo can. Then it's got a lid. Picked that up at an Army surplus store. Now, this can measures uh, 17 inches wide, 9.5 inches deep and 14 inches tall if you want to give it those dimensions so there's plenty of room for all the radio equipment and I believe I can get three or four of these batteries in there also so this will all be mounted uh, approximately a two inch set down from the top inset from the top on a panel so everything will be nice and easily accessible the batteries, of course, will be down underneath the panel where you won't see them. Let me go to the workbench and show you the diagram that I'm going to be using for not only the radio connection, but also all the power connection. <clears throat> okay, so I've, uh, outside of the metal can, I've connected all these things together and made sure they worked. I have a previous video showing that. But inside the can, I'm going to be mounting the uh, the uh, Yesu, the Z817, and the Rig Blaster Advantage. Now, between the uh, 817 and the Rig Blaster Advantage, of course, we're going to have a, a microphone push-to-talk cable. We have serial data coming from the Rig Blaster into the Z817, and then passing that on through to the uh, to the radio. Our audio comes out of the radio and into the rig blaster. We're going to be panel mounting a USB jack on the front. This is both so that I can plug my uh, computer uh, into the top of the, the panel. We're going to take audio out of the rig blaster through a volume control. This is called an L-pad and into an MFJ clear tone speaker. We're also going to be taking a panel mounted RJ45 into the rig blaster and this will allow us to use the factory Yesu microphone. RF from the radio into the Z817 and onto a top or panel mounted PL uh, SO239. We're also going to have a panel mounted uh, jack, this will be a 1 8 inch mono jack. Uh, for our CWN. Now this MFJ speaker, I've purchased an extra one here. These are really good speakers. I have another video on this. I have one mounted in my Jeep. And what I'm going to do is pull this apart and flush mount this half to the top of the panel. So I won't be using this bottom half. We'll just cut a hole big enough for the speaker and from the bottom screw straight in through the panel. Okay, so that is the the uh, transceiver portion of it. But we have to power this gizmo. <clears throat> okay, so here's the schematic for the power distribution. On the top of the panel, we'll have a, a panel-mounted Anderson power pole connector. We're going to be coming into a terminal block through fuses into uh, connecting to the positive side of each battery. From also connecting to the battery, we're going to have a set of fuses which will be going out to the radio and equipment with a set of switches. The switches will allow us to either use each battery independently or we can turn them all down and use them in parallel. Uh, additionally, if one of these batteries goes bad and we need to pull it out of the circuit, we can lift this fuse. We'll have another terminal block. From the terminal block, we'll be powering the uh, FT817. We'll also be powering the Z817. And if you haven't seen my modification for adding a 12 to 6 volt regulator into the Z817, you might want to watch that. <clears throat> 
At the top of the outside of the panel, I'm going to be adding for additional uh, accessories to, uh, to run on the battery a 12 volt DC banana terminals. I'm going to have a 12 volt uh, cigarette lighter socket. I'm also going to have a 5 volt USB output. This would be useful for uh, charging cell phones and uh, possibly charging my uh, tablet. It will be switched uh, because I don't want the, uh, the, the 5 volt uh, regulation in here consuming power when I'm not using it. I will also have a voltmeter so that I can monitor the voltage on the battery pack and it again will be switched. I don't want the meter consuming energy when I'm not needing it. Now that's sort of the schematic layout. This is sort of the uh, <laughs> the physical layout or, or how everything will be connected. Um, we have ground of course going to each of the batteries. Uh, now this will be through a terminal block on this side. Uh, each battery will have its own fuse. I'm going to be using a, a panel mounted uh, four gang switch and each of these have a fuse. Off of the terminal block on the uh, powered side if you want to call it that. Here we're going to be using a panel mounted voltmeter and USB charging circuit in one unit. I'm going to be using this two pole switch block which also has fuse it's not necessary for me at this point but these are the switches I'm going to be used for uh, switching these two devices on or off and it has a bit that built-in uh, 12 volt cigarette lighter and I'm going to add the 12 volt uh, banana plugs on there too for accessories uh, just in case you you may need it and of course you're going to be providing uh, 12 volts to the Z817 auto tuner and to the uh, Yaesu radio. And you notice there is no power going to the rig blaster. The rig blaster is actually powered from the USB on the computer. Okay, so hopefully you get an idea of how the power is going to be connected up and how the radio is going to be connected up. Now if you've not watched my other channel, Survival Reality, I'm going to put a link to it here. Because I'm not only about ham radio, I'm also about uh, emergency preparedness. One of the problems that we could potentially face is EMP. And this is what this box is designed for. Because I am co concerned about EMP, what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to penetrate the outside of this box in any way. So to do that, I'll be making a... A frame that can slide in and out of the box using half inch uh, aluminum angle and I'm going to be using the blind rivet or pop rivets to hold all this together. So what we should end up with is a, a cage that can slide down into the box with a front panel and then on the front panel all of the devices and switches and radios and all that kind of good stuff will be mounted on the front of it. So let's get started making the frame. 